Father Nazarius, also known as Father Nicodem, was born as Nicholas Richard Priboyan on 10 December 1951 in the little town of Llunapia in South Wales. Llunapia at that time was a mining town and Father Nazarius' father, Vladimir, worked as a miner in that town. He had come there after the Second World War. In the first picture we can see Father being held as an infant by his father and that picture was taken in Pontypridd in Wales in the spring of 1952. In the second picture we see Father as a young toddler in Wales. This picture was taken in January of 1953. Now the family remained in Wales until Father was about seven years old and then they moved to Canada. In this picture we see the Priboyan family in Wales. Baby Nicholas is shown together with his sister Maria and his father Vladimir and mother Margaret. Vladimir was of Serbian descent and came from the area of Dalmatia and Margaret was half Welsh, half Irish. When Father Nazarius was about seven years old there was a mining accident at the mine where his father worked and after that the family decided to move to Canada and they moved to the area of Hamilton not far away from Toronto. In this picture we see Nicholas as a young lad together with his sisters and other friends and family. This picture was taken around about 1964 when father was about 13 years old in Hamilton, Canada. Here is another picture of Nicholas together with his sisters taken a few years later. This picture was taken around about 1967. Maria is standing at the back and in front are the twins Susan and Sandra. Father Nazarius used to tell me that the major benefits of the family having moved from Wales to Canada was that they would be near to an Orthodox Church. Although he had been baptized in Wales by a Serbian Orthodox priest who came visiting from London, there was no church nearby them. So when they moved to Hamilton, they had the benefits of the Serbian Orthodox Church which was just up the road from them. And not only could he attend the liturgy every Sunday, but he could become involved in the choir, youth groups and so forth. In this picture we see the old parish church near to the steel mills. This is a lovely picture of the Priboyan family taken in 1969 in Stony Creek, Canada. We see Nicholas together with his parents Vladimir and Margaret and his sisters Maria, Susan and Sandra. This picture was taken on the same day that Nicholas asked his parents for a blessing to go and study at the seminary which was in the monastery of Kirka in Dalmatia. Father Nazarius told me that as a young child he had had a very vivid dream where he was flying over a valley and in the valley below there was a monastery. Now he didn't understand the meaning of the dream until he eventually came to the monastery of Kirka in Dalmatia and as the car came round the corner and he saw the monastery for the first time he realized that it was exactly the monastery he had seen in his dream. Now life in the monastery was not very easy for father who had just come from Canada. In fact he told me that when he first arrived there weren't any toilets and everyone was forced to go out into the bushes and to find a place where they could do their business. As I've intimated life in the monastery was not easy for Nicholas. In fact after the first six months he decided that he would rather return home the only problem was that his family didn't have the necessary funds and so depressed he went to go and spend the summer with an uncle of his staying not far away. Now one day his uncle took him to a blacksmith shop and, um, and as Nicholas entered into the shop and was thinking about his life in the monastery and how difficult it was and how he would prefer to return home and how everyone was treating him as a stranger and how everything was so strange to him he saw how the blacksmith pulled out a rusted piece of steel and first of all he shoved it into the fire into the burning hot coals then after a while pulled it out and placed it on the anvil and smacked it with a hammer back into the fire back onto the anvil smashed with the hammer back into the fire pulling on the bellows out of the fire smashing with the hammer and Nicholas took this as being very much what his life was like what his life in the monastery the beating the fire the suffering and so on and so forth and after a while he noticed how the blacksmith um, took out the piece of steel shoved it into um, into a barrel of water and then held it up into the light and Nicholas stood there gazing in wonder at the symbol Omega um, which is the last letter of the Greek alphabet symbolizing um, completion and um, perfection in fact it was a horseshoe but for Nicholas this was a small sign from God how even though he was going through the sufferings that didn't make sense and through the fire and the beatings and so on it was in fact God who was using the circumstances to mold him and to turn him into someone perfect and so he decided to stay on at the monastery and in fact um, after a little while he decided that he in fact wanted to become a monk 
and um, he was tonsured on the feast day of the Annunciation on 7th of April 1971 and that was the day on which this picture was taken and um, so Nicholas took the name Nikodim which was the name of one of the archbishops of Serbia after he was tonsured Nicholas was called Father Nikodim here is a picture of him taken beside the river Kirka near to the monastery in June of 1971 he was still only 19 years old at the time. In this picture we see Father Nikodim together with some of the seminarians and professors from the monastery in Kirka. Father Nikodim is third from the right in the front row and next to him to his right is Archimandrite Artemia who at that time was in charge of the seminary. Uh, Archimandrite Artemia later became Bishop of Kosovo and Metohia. This picture was taken in 1972. It shows Father Nicodem together with other monks and seminarians from Kirka. Father Nicodem is standing to the left of the man in the middle with the tie. He is wearing glasses and as we can see his beard is already growing quite long. This picture was also taken round about 1972. We see Father Nicodem together with his fellow seminarians in the refectory. This is lunchtime at the monastery Kirka. Here is a curious picture of Father Nicodem together with the cooks at the monastery Kirka. This picture was also taken in 1972. Here we see Father Nicodem serving as a deacon with Bishop Stefan of Dalmatia in 1972. Uh, he was ordained in that year as a deacon in Niagara Falls, Ontario. The blue vestments that we see him wearing had been made by his mother Margaret. Here we see Father Nicodem standing beside a fountain in the courtyard of the monastery of Kirka. This picture was also taken around about 1972. The monastery Kirka dates back many centuries. In fact, Father told me that early Christians had been baptized in the river that runs by the monastery. And in fact, there is an ancient church which forms part of the complex. This picture was also taken in 1972. It shows Father Nicodem walking up the hill from the monastery. This picture was taken in 1972. It shows Father Nicodem holding an ancient gospel together with the Father Jovan. This is taken in the library at the monastery of Kirka. This photo was taken some years later, as we see that Father is already an ordained priest, since he is wearing a purple sash. Here he is shown visiting the seminary. After he finished at the seminary of Kirka, he went to Belgrade, where he began his studies at the faculty there. However, disaster struck at that time when his mother died, so he decided to return home to North America so that he could be close to his family, where he could comfort them. Father Nicodem was ordained as a priest in 1974 in Dalmatia by Bishop Stefan. This portrait picture was taken of him in Hamilton, Canada in 1976. This is another portrait picture of Father Nicodem. He was about 25 years old at the time. This is one of Father Nicodem's Kolyevo. It celebrates his family's patron saints today, which is Saints Cosmos and Damien, the unmercenary healers. This is the Priboyan family's home in Stony Creek, Hamilton, Ontario. Father Nazarius' father still lives there to this very day. Here is Vladimir Priboyan some years later in Canada. Sisters Sandra and Susan gaze down from the window above. This is Susan's wedding day. Father Nicodem performed the service. Next to him is his sister Maria and next to her is Mrs. Pat Germain, a family friend, then is Susan in her wedding dress, standing next to her husband Stephen, and on the far right in the blue is Sister Sandra. This family picture was taken in May 1980. Sitting in front is Father Nicodem, to his right is his sister Sandra, and to his left is his brother-in-law George Yatsko. Behind George Yatsko is his wife, Father Nazarius' sister Maria and behind Father Nazarius is his sister Susan and um, beside Susan on her right is their father Vladimir and to his right is his uh, new wife Maria. Father Nicodem is pictured with his sisters Maria and Susan. This is round about 1980. Here we see Father Nicodem marrying his sister Maria to George Yatsko in July 1978 in Hamilton, Canada. George Yatsko was later ordained and became Father George. This is taken a few years later. 
we see Maria together with two of her children, John and baby Nicholas. This is the Yatsko family, Father George and his wife Maria, and three of their children, John, Elizabeth and Nicholas. Here is Father Nicodem with his twin sisters Susan and Sandra. On Susan's right is her husband Stephen. Here is Susan in her wedding dress. Father Nicodem also performed the marriage service of his sister Susan to her husband Stephen Lush. The service was done in 1985 in Hamilton, Canada. Here we see Father Nicodem presenting the chalice to Susan. Sisters Susan and Sandra. Today it's Sandra's wedding day. This picture is taken much later on. It's the daughters of Sandra, Andriana and Maria, the nieces of Father Nicodem. This is Father Nicodem's extended family, his uncles and aunts and cousins, father and sisters, etc. Beside Father Nicodem on his right is his sister Susan. This is her wedding day, August 1985. And beside Susan on her right is their father Vladimir and his wife Maria. And in front of Father Nicodem, kneeling, is um, Sister Sandra. And to the far left of the picture is Sister Maria and her family. Father Nicodem is baptizing his nephew Jacob Lush in July 1997 in Canada. This is Susan's youngest child and her other children are Sarah and Kyle. Father Nicodem is beginning the liturgy with the words Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As we mentioned earlier, he returned to North America in the mid-1970s after his mother died. The bishop at the time of Eastern America asked him to take the parish of St. George in Masontown, Pennsylvania for a couple of weeks. That was in 1976. And as Father Nazaris told me, the couple of weeks turned into 20 years, over which period of time he established seven parishes and built five churches. In 1977, he established the parish of St. Sava in Boston, Massachusetts, where he also received his Masters of Theology at the Hellenic College, which was in Boston. Then from 1978 to 1979, he was at the parish of St. Petka in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, and during the late 1970s, he was also a member of the Diocesan Department of College Student Ministry. Then from 1979 to 1980, he was at the Holy Mother of God Monastery in Shadeland. Then from 1980 to 1984, he established the parish of St. Sava in Winnipeg, Manitoba. And during that time, he also established a parish in Thunder Bay. That was from 1981 to 1984. Here is Father Nicodem together with some of his altar boys. It is a notable thing that his altar boys kept contact with him years later once they had grown up and gotten married. This picture is taken of Father Nicodem at a church summer camp round about 1976 in Doylestown, Ohio. Here is the Serbian Orthodox Church that Father built in Calgary, Canada. Father Nicodem is seated in the middle and is surrounded by some of his loving parishioners in Canada. Father Nicodem is teaching children about the Gospel of Christ through fun activities. Father Nicodem also organized dance groups and choirs. This is a dance group from Canada. When he was at the parish of St. Sava in Winnipeg, Manitoba, he was helped by his sister Susan, who organized and taught a choir and dance group there. Here is another Serbian folklore dance group organized by Father Nicodem. Here Father Nicodem is pictured together with his Sunday school of the parish of St. Sava. Father Nicodem did not enjoy attending clergy conferences for a variety of reasons. This is one rare instance when he did. He is 11th from the left in the back row. You can notice him by his thick reddish longish beard and the kamilavka that he is wearing. After he established the parish of St. Sava in Winnipeg, Manitoba, Father Nicodem was transferred to Edmonton, Alberta, where he established from scratch the parish of St. Sava. He was there from 1984 to 1988, and at that time he was raised to the rank of Protosingulos. And then from 1988 to 1990, he established the parish of St. Stephen in Ottawa, Ontario. And then from 1990 to 1998, 
he established the parish of St. Petka in Orlando, Florida. And in the picture we can see Father Nicodem leading out the cross to be planted in the field where they intend to build the church of St. Petka for the Orlando parish. The Bishop of Canada is here together with Father Nicodem planting the cross in the field where they intend to build the church of St. Sava in Edmonton, Alberta. This is the frame for the dome of the church of St. Sava in Edmonton. Father Nicodem is standing outside of the church of St. Sava as it goes up in record time, surprising everybody. The workers have now reached the dome of the church of St. Sava. A view of the church in construction from the north. Father Nicodem is standing in front of the royal doors of the newly constructed iconostasis of the parish of St. Sava, together with his friends and collaborators. This is the interior of one of Father Nazarius's churches in construction. The lawn is now being laid down for the parish church of St. Sava in Edmonton, Alberta. The church of St. Sava is now completed. This is a view from the south. The lawn is still in the process of being laid. This is what the completed church looks like from across the street. As I mentioned earlier, Father Nicodem served at the parish of St. Petka in Orlando, Florida from 1990 to 1998. During the same period of time, from 1993 to 1996, he also established the parish of St. Peter and Paul in Atlanta, Georgia. I met Father Nicodem in the summer of 1993 at an OCA youth camp. In this picture here, we see Father serving a slava for some of the parishioners of Orlando, Florida. The Orlando parish purchased a portion of land in Longwood, and every year Father Nicodem would serve a sunrise service on Pascha on the front lawn. Father Nicodem is serving a sunrise paschal service on another part of the lawn of the Orlando parish. The parish of St. Petka was using a house for its services. The middle part of the house was used for the church service, and Father Nicodem had a room off to the side. I also had a room in that house. But after a number of years it was decided to extend the altar of the church, and that is what is being shown here. After the new altar was completed, the cross is raised on the roof of St. Petka. This is an inside view of what the altar looked like from the church. Here is the same church while a service is in progress. Father Nicodem is performing an adult baptism at the parish church of St. Petka in Orlando. Here is Father Nicodem with his avid fans from the Sunday school of the parish of St. Petka. The Sunday School of St. Petka was in fact held on Saturdays, and a fun class is now in progress inside the parish church. Not only did the children learn about the Gospel and the Christian faith, they also learned about their culture and language. While Father Nicodem was in Orlando, he got as a gift a Dalmatian dog. Now as we know, Father Nicodem himself was a Dalmatian. One day one of the children of the church asked Father Nicodem what he was going to be calling his dog, and in a joking way Father said that he wasn't going to be calling him anything since he was just a dog. The child was surprised and said to him, well you have to call him something. So as a result, Father decided to call his dog Nesto, which in Serbian means something. I met Father Nicodem at an OCA youth camp in the summer of 1993. We became very good friends from that time on. I moved to Orlando and joined Father from the end of 1993 to the end of 1997, and thereafter I went to Yugoslavia. Father Nicodem joined me in Yugoslavia in 1998. While we were staying in Orlando, Father Nicodem and I traveled to various places in North America and around the world. In this picture here, Father Nicodem is shown visiting the Serbian Orthodox Monastery of New Carlisle near to Chicago. In the picture are also Father Gavrilo and Mother Evpraxia. This is the last Nativity of Christ that Father Nicodem served in Orlando. This picture was taken in January of 1998. Soon after this he went to Serbia. When Father Nicodem arrived in Serbia in 1998, I had already been there for about six months. We then stayed for another year in Serbia, visiting monasteries and holy places. In 1999, we moved to Mount Athos in Greece. Pictured here is the Serbian monastery of Hilandar on Mount Athos, 
We stayed at this monastery and also at the monasteries of Xenophonos, Philotheo, the Great Lavra, and in fact we visited all of the monasteries on Mount Athos. We moved to the Holy Land in the year 2000 on our way to Africa. We were given the monastery of St. Chariton near to Jerusalem. We are shown here on our way to the monastery after we had done some shopping. At that time, Father Nicodem was tonsured to the great schema and took the name Nazarius after Blessed Nazari, who re-established the monastery of Alam in Russia. Father Nazarius was also raised to the rank of Archimandrite. We arrived in South Africa in the year 2000 on the day after Pentecost, with only $3,000 in our pocket. We are shown here next to the 1963 Volvo that was lent to us on our way to Botswana. On the roof of the car is our toilet, and in the back of the car is everything we own in the world. Although we had come to Africa with only a little bit of money, the Lord enabled us to purchase the land for the Monastery of the Descent of the Holy Spirit in Gerardsville in November of 2001. On the feast day of Epiphany 2003, Father Nazarius went out into the field and planted a cross on the spot where he intended to raise a church to the glory of God and in honor of St. Demetrius, since we had signed the agreement for the purchase of the land on his feast day. On that feast day of Epiphany 2003, Father Nazarius gave a sermon to the crowd about how wonderful it is to raise a church to the glory of God. There was a man in that crowd who was a builder, and the next day he came to Father Nazarius and told him that he wanted to build this church. Father Nazarius explained to him that unfortunately we didn't have the necessary funds. The man was quite sad and was about to leave when Father Nazarius called him back and asked me if we had at least enough money to start the church. I was the econom at that time. I told Father Nazarius we had enough to at least do the foundations of the church. And as soon as we began, it amazed us how money came in from all different places that we didn't expect. The Church of St. Demetrius at the Monastery of the Descent of the Holy Spirit was built in three months. We began with no money and we ended with no money, but everything was paid for to the glory of God. The picture here was taken a few years later in 2006. Besides for Father Nazarius and myself, we were joined from time to time at the monastery by various persons. Pictured here together with us is Brother Matthew, who later became Father Seraphim. We were also joined by Father John, a deacon from Kenya, and Brother Nikon from Uganda. The frescoes on the interior of the Church of St. Demetrius were designed by Father Nazarius and executed by Anna Wilson. The picture here shows us a view into the altar and was taken on the Nativity of Christ. This photograph was taken on Sunday morning of Pascha. You can see us holding red eggs. It is interesting to note how people of different cultures and races would gather around Father Nazarius and how he could be meaningful to all of them. Father Nazarius is standing here in his great schema. He is holding a red egg. It is Pascha of the year 2003. On the day of St. Demetrius every year, we would hold a celebration and set up a big tent. People of different races and cultures would join us, Orthodox and non-Orthodox. From the year 2000 to 2008, Father Nazarius served at the Monastery of the Descents of the Holy Spirit in South Africa, which he established. From the year 2000 to 2005, he was the head of the mission and the abbot of the monastery. Then from the year 2005 to 2008, he was retired, but did a postgraduate degree in Biblical Archaeology. Father Nazarius is welcoming Elias Klobatler and his wife Betty Klobatler to the monastery. They were later baptized, taking the names Frumentius and Evgenia. They became our close co-workers and looked after our orphanage. Frumentius was also later ordained as a presbyter. This picture of newly baptized members was taken on the Nativity of Christ in January 2005. Father Nazarius was instrumental in converting South Africans to Orthodoxy. He would catechize them for up to two years. After the liturgy in the church on the feast day of the monastery, Father Nazarius proceeded outside to the tent we had set up. He is about to cut the festal bread. This picture was taken on the feast day of Pentecost 2005. Father Nazarius is gathering the children around him as he is about to cut the festal bread for the celebration day of St. Demetrius 2004. 
the children will help him turn the bread. My sister Kara is visiting Father Nazarius and myself at the monastery. This picture was taken in 2004. While we were still sitting there, we noticed a fire breaking out in the felt, and we had to rush out with buckets of water and hose pipes to quench the blaze. After more than eight years of absence, Father Nazarius and I returned to America for a visit in 2006. Father was very well received in the Orlando parish and everywhere else he went. Here we are pictured with Fred and Mary Jane Allegro, two of our very close friends in Orlando. On that same trip we visited our friends in Atlanta. We stayed at the home of Doug and Miriana Brockett together with their sons Stefan and Jovan. Here father is pictured together with the Brockett family and other friends in Atlanta. Doug is on the far left and Miriana is standing next to father. We also visited our good friend Arthur Chesser in Tennessee, originally from Orlando. Here we see Arthur together with his son, daughter-in-law and grandchildren. This is a surprise picture, taken in July of 2006. Father Nazarius is standing at the door of my cell. In 2006, we also got the opportunity to visit the Drakensberg Mountains. Father is standing here in front of the amphitheater. We went together with my mother Elizabeth and my sister, Sister Damaris. Father enjoyed this trip as we also got an opportunity to visit battle sites in Natal of the Boer War. Sitting out on the field of the monastery, Father Nazarius is training future clergy. Father devoted much of his time to training and teaching future clergy and converts to orthodoxy. Father's talks were inspiring and practical. Father's health began to deteriorate from 2003 when he was diagnosed with chronic kidney failure. He nearly died at that time, but fortunately he was stabilized and began a period of peritoneal dialysis which he could do at home at the monastery. However, at the beginning of 2007, he got peritonitis, which is an infection in his peritoneal sac, and he was forced to switch to hemodialysis, which he did at the renal clinic three times a week. He would leave at about 2 or 3 in the morning and come back by around 8 or 9. In October of 2007, Father Nazarius complained of shortness of breath, and it was discovered that he had heart disease. So he went to the hospital for an operation where they placed the stent into one of his arteries from his heart. Although the operation was successful, he developed an infection. And for the next three months in the hospital, he went through periods of recovery and deterioration. On Wednesday, the 2nd of January, 2008, Father Nazarius fell asleep in the Lord. The funeral for Father Nazarius was served on the following Wednesday, 9th of January, 2008, at the Church of St. Demetrius at the Monastery of the Descents of the Holy Spirit, which Father had respectively built and founded, concelebrating together with myself, with the Serbian priest Father Pantelemon and the Greek priest Father Athenodoros, together with the prayers of His Eminence Archbishop Seraphim. An emotional crowd of Father Nazarius' spiritual children attended and sang at his funeral. The body of Father Nazarius was piously laid to rest in the tomb especially built for him in the church of St. Demetrius, while his soul prepared for its journey to the kingdom of God in glory. There are not sufficient words to sum up Father Nazarius' life. He was one of the greatest men of our era. Truly, as Christ said, he lost his life for the sake of the gospel of Christ, and he gained his salvation and the salvation of those around him. We miss Father incredibly, yet still we believe he is with us. His death was an unexpected shock, yet we believe God foreknew this day and prepared Father for it. Father used to say that the love of God was such that God would not stop short of breaking his bones in order to save him. But God did not need to break Father Nazarius's bones. Through the trials and sufferings that Father endured, often because of ungrateful people, Father was glorified by God. Father Nazarius was prepared to give up everything for Christ. He did not seek wealth in this world or glory or honor. He sacrificed all for Christ. 
Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the good estate of the holy churches of all, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Mercy for this holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, the Mother of God and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life unto Christ our God. To Thee, O Lord. For unto the earth do all glory, honor, and worship, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. The first antiphon. Bless the Lord, O my soul, blessed art thou, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all that he hath done for thee, who is gracious unto all thine iniquities, who healeth all thine infirmities, who redeemeth thy life from corruption, who crowneth thee with mercy and compassion, who fulfilleth thy desire with good things, thy youth shall be renewed as the eagles. The Lord performeth deeds of mercy, and executed judgment for all them that are wronged. He hath made his ways known unto Moses, unto the sons of Israel, the things that he hath willed. Compassionate and merciful is the Lord, long-suffering and plenteous in mercy. Not unto the end will he be angered, neither unto eternity will he be wroth. Not according to our iniquities hath he dealt with us, neither according to our sins hath he rewarded us. For according to the height of heaven from on the earth the Lord has made his mercy to prevail over them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our iniquities from us. Like as a father had compassion upon his sons, so hath the Lord had compassion upon them that fear him. For he knoweth whereof we are made, he hath remembered that we are dust. As for man his days are as the grass, as a flower of the field, so shall he blossom forth. For when the wind is passed over it, then it shall be gone, and no longer will it know the place thereof. But the mercy of the Lord is from eternity, even unto eternity, upon them that fear him. And his righteousness is upon sons of sons, upon them that keep his testament and remember his commandments to do them. The Lord in heaven hath prepared his throne, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, all ye his angels mighty in strength, that perform his word to hear the voice of his words. Bless the Lord, all ye his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all ye his works, in every place of his dominion. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Blessed art thou, O Lord. The second antiphon. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord in my life. I will chant unto my God for as long as I have my being. Trust ye not in princes in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. His spirit shall go forth, and he shall return unto his earth. In that day all his thoughts shall perish. Blessed is he whom the God of Jacob is his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who hath made heaven and the earth, the sea and all that is therein, who keepeth truth unto eternity, who executed judgment for the wronged, who giveth food unto the hungry, the Lord looseth the fettered, the Lord maketh wise the blind, the Lord setteth the right the fallen, 
The Lord loveth the righteous, the Lord preserveth the proselytes. He shall adopt for his own the orphan and widow, and the way of sinners shall he destroy. The Lord shall be king unto eternity, thy God, O Sion, unto generation and generation, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Only begotten Son and Word of God, who art immortal, yet disdain for our salvation, to be incarnate of the holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, and without change didst become man, and was crucified, O Christ God, trampling down death by death, Thou who art one of the Holy Trinity, glorified with the Father and the Holy Spirit, save us. The third antiphon in the eighth tone. In thy kingdom remember us, O Lord, when thou comest into thy kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in the heavens. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom, stand aright. O come, let us worship and fall down before Christ. O Son of God, who didst rise from the dead, save us who sing to Thee. Alleluia. Ah. The Resurrectional Troparion and Condacion. The Resurrectional Troparion in the first tone. When the stone had been sealed by the Jews, and the soldiers were guarding thy pure body, thou didst rise on the third day, O Saviour, granting life unto the world. Wherefore the hosts of the heavens cried out to thee, O life, give her glory to thy resurrection, O Christ. Glory to thy kingdom, glory to thy dispensation, 
O only lover of mankind. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. As God, thou didst arise from the tomb in glory, and thou didst raise the world together with thyself, and mortal nature praiseth thee as God, and death hath vanished, and Adam danceth, O Master, and Eve now, freed from fetters, rejoiceth as she cries. Crieth out, Thou art he, O Christ, that grantest unto all resurrection. Resurrection troparion and condacion in the second tone. When thou didst descend unto death, O life immortal, then didst thou slay Hades with the lightning of thy divinity, and when thou didst also raise the dead out of the nethermost deaths, all the hosts of the heavens cried out, O life-giver Christ, our God, glory be to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thou didst arise from the tomb, O omnipotent Saviour, and Hades was terrified on beholding the wonder, and the dead arose, and creation at the sight thereof rejoiceth with thee, and Adam also is joyful, and the world, O my Saviour, praiseth thee for ever. Resurrection Ultraparion and Condacion in the third tone. Let the heavens be glad, let earthly things rejoice, for the Lord hath wrought might with his arm. He hath trampled down death by death, the firstborn of the dead hath he become. From the belly of Hades hath he delivered us, and hath granted to the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Thou didst arise today from the tomb, O merciful one, and didst lead us out of the gates of death. Today Adam danceth and Eve rejoiceth, and together with them both the prophets and patriarchs unceasingly praise the divine might of thine authority. Resurrection Ultraparion and Condacion in the fourth tone. Having learned the joyful proclamation of the resurrection from the angel, and having cast off the ancestral condemnation, the women disciples of the Lord spake to the apostles exultantly, Death is despoiled, and Christ God is risen, granting to the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. My Saviour and Redeemer hath as God raised up the earth born from the grave, and from their petters, and he hath broken the gates of Hades, and Master hath risen on the third day. Resurrectional Troparion and Condacion in the fifth tone. Let us, O faithful, praise and worship the Word, who is co-unoriginate with the Father and the Spirit, and who was born of the Virgin for our salvation. For he was pleased to ascend the cross in the flesh, and to endure death, and to raise the dead by his glorious resurrection. Glory to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Unto Hades, O my Saviour, didst thou descend, and having broken its gates as one omnipotent, thou as Creator didst raise up the dead together with thyself, and thou didst break the sting of death, and didst deliver Adam from the curse, O lover of mankind, wherefore we all cry to thee, save us, O Lord. Resurrectional Troparion Condacion in the sixth tone. 
Angelic hosts were above thy tomb, and they that guarded thee became as dead. And Mary stood by the grave, seeking thy most immaculate body. Thou didst despoil Hades, and was not tempted by it. Thou didst meet the Virgin, and didst grant us life. O thou who didst rise from the dead, O Lord, glory be to thee. He Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, having by his life bestowing hand raised up all the dead. Out of the dark abysses Christ, God the giver of life, has bestowed the resurrection upon the fallen human race, for he is the Savior of all the resurrection and the life, and the God of all. all. Resurrection Ultraparion and Condacion in the seventh tone. Thou didst destroy death by thy cross, thou didst open paradise to the thief, thou didst change the lamentation of the murderers, and thou didst command thine apostles to proclaim that thou didst arise, O Christ God, and grant us to the world great mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. No longer will the dominion of death be able to keep men captive, for Christ hath descended, demolishing and destroying the powers thereof. Hades is bound, the prophets rejoice with one voice, saying, A Saviour hath come to them that have faith. Come forth, ye faithful, for the resurrection. The Resurrection Ultraparion Condacion in the Eighth Tone. From on high thou didst descend, O compassionate one, to burial of three days as thou submitted, that thou mightest free us from our passions. O our life and resurrection, O Lord, glory be to thee. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Having arisen from the tomb, thou didst raise up the dead, and didst resurrect Adam. Eve also danceth at thy resurrection, and the ends of the world celebrate thine arising from the dead, O great Clemer, Siful One. Both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. O protection of Christians that cannot be put to shame, O mediation unto the Creator unfailing, disdain not the sopply and voices of sinners, but be thou quick, O good one, to help us who in faith cry unto thee. Hasten to intercession, and speed thou to make supplication. Thou who dost ever protect, O Theotokos, them that honor thee. For holy art thou, our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy immortal, have mercy on us. Glory 
to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Holy Immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, Holy Mighty, Holy Immortal, have mercy on us.